Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we are going to look at second subtopic in chapter 3, which is heat treatment of ferrous metal. From this subtopic, students should be able to understand the purpose of heat treatment for ferrous metal, classify heat treatment types and the usage of each treatment, understand the process of each heat treatment and microstructure produced. There are several purposes of heat treatment for ferrous metal. We might do the heat treatment in order to change the properties of the material. Sometimes we do the heat treatment to improve the hardness or sometimes to improve the ductility of the metal and also maybe to release stress in the metal and sometimes also for make it easy to machine the metal. As for classify heat treatment types, we will learn on five types of heat treatment. Some of them are annealing, spherodizing, normalizing, and hardening. Each type of heat treatment will give you different and product properties. So we choose the heat treatment type depend on the purpose we are going to do the heat treatment. And then the third one, understand the process of each heat treatment and microstructure produced. When we talk about the process, it means that we need to know on how much the temperature we need to heat our ferrous metal into and then how long it takes for us to heat the ferrous metal in order to be treated. Okay, The detail we will learn throughout this chapter. So why we need to do heat treatment? Heat treatments are usually applied to change the mechanical properties for example, increase or decrease the strength or hardness or machine ability of our ferrous metal, relieve the internal stress. Several problems may occur in heat treatment process if it not carefully performed. For example, our ferrous metal could be cracking or distortion. Then why we need to do heat treatment? Most part will require heat treatment either after or during the process for proper in-service properties. For example, before shaping, we do the heat treatment to softening a metal for forming. And then after we do the forming, we do the heat treatment to relieve strain hardening and then final or finish we do the heat treatment to achieve final strength and hardness for our ferrous metal main purpose of heat treatment is to enhance the quality of products certain type of heat treatment will improve in ductility of our ferrous metal some type of heat treatment will relieve internal stress. Sometimes it will increase of strength and hardness and improve in machine ability and toughness of our metal. This is the purpose of doing heat treatment. We must know the suitable type of heat treatment that could be used in order to get our objective. Most heat treating operation begin with heating the alloy into austenitic phase field to dissolve the carbide in the iron. When we said about heating the alloy into austenitic phase field, it means that the heating temperature must be above 727 degrees Celsius or above eutectoid temperature. Sometimes, only a little bit higher than eutectoid temperature, sometimes you need 
to go much higher than that. We will learn on that depending on our type of heat treatment later. Factor involved in heat treatment. For classification, we have two types. The first one is heating and slow cooling. The second one, we have heating and rapid cooling or we also call it as quenching. When we do rapid cooling, it means that we want to increase the hardness of our metal and if we talk about slow cooling, sometimes we want to release the stress in our metal. Another factor is temperature up to which material is heated. Okay, Depending on the type of heat treatment, we need to know the temperature that we need to heat our metal in order to make the properties change. Later on, we will look at the difference when we use hypo-eutectoid composition and hyper-eutectoid composition. Depending on the carbon content, we will need to change the heating temperature for certain type of heat treatment. The third one, we must know the factor involved in heat treatment is length of time that the material is held at that elevated temperature. For example, sometimes when we heat it up above eutectoid, we need to know the bath or soaking time, how long it takes for our material to change into austenite, for example. After that, then we can cool it down. And then another factor is rate of cooling. When we talk about rate of cooling, we can relate it with the earlier factor. Rate of cooling depend on how slow or how fast we are cooling our metal. The surrounding atmosphere under the thermal treatment. Sometimes we cool it down in furnace for example. Sometimes we need to do it in room temperature. It depends on at surrounding atmosphere. All these factors are depending on the type of heat treatment that we want to do. For this chapter, we will cover our heat treatment procedure in this carbon content composition, which are the composition at eutectoid. Composition at eutectoid start over here and it's end at 2.14% of carbon content in the iron. Our eutectoid is 0.76 carbon content and over here is 0.022% of carbon content in iron. The most common heat treatment is annealing where we have two types of annealing. The first one is process annealing and the second one is full annealing. The second type is normalizing. The third type is spherodizing. The fourth one is quenching or hardening. And the fifth one is tempering. These five types of heat treatment differ mainly in the way of material is cooled from elevated temperature. When we cool it down slowly, it might become certain type of heat treatment. If we cool it down fast, it might give us another type of heat treatment which will produce different properties of our end product. Before we go further for our type of heat treatment, First, we must know on heat treating temperature range for plain carbon steel. In this figure, it's showing you the normalizing, the full annealing, 
and sparodizing temperature range. Sparodizing occurs below eutectoid temperature. Other than that, we need to know LC or lower critical temperature which is A1 over here and we also need to know UC or upper critical temperature or A3 over here. So when we say above lower critical temperature, it means that the region is above A1 over here. When we talk about above upper critical temperature, it means that the range is over here. Sometimes we might say below upper critical temperature. It means that below A3 line. This temperature range is important for us to know the temperature of our heating procedure in order to get our certain type of heat treatment. Alright, so in next video, we will start for the first heat treatment, which is annealing. I will divide the video by type of heat treatment. So that's all for this video. You can ask me anything if you don't understand the content of my video. Till we meet again, thank you, have a nice day.